Hey guys, how's it going? So it's been a few weeks since we've toured the grounds. There's a lot to see. Uh, a lot of the trees are done blooming, except for a few. And uh, I've got a neat little uh, thing to tell you about one of them that is something new to me. Uh, I got my new cottage garden planted. Uh, I'm probably like 85, 90% of the way done, so I can't wait to show you that. And we opened the pool this week, so we'll take a walk back there. Let's start in the backyard gardens, and I'll show you what's blooming today. So it's been a little while since we've been back here. So I thought I would take you on a little tour to show you what's still blooming because my Lenten rose still going. Uh, my Brunera is still blooming. And now we're starting to see some of the bearded irises. Is that a beautiful bloom? I wish I could tell you what variety it is, but I did not plant it. But the hellebores are still going and they're just beautiful. Bleeding hearts are almost done. As you can see, they're starting to fade. But look at that Brunera. Isn't that something? I didn't have Brunera in my former garden. I didn't really have a whole lot of shade, so I generally bypassed it. But I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite shade perennials now. And then over here on this side of the garden, I actually have a little story because there was a bunny nest under there and my dog found it and actually brought a bunny in my house. <laughs> and we didn't, it was not funny. It was actually really not funny at the time. I thought she killed it, uh, but miraculously we saved it. We put it back in the nest and uh, well, actually we didn't know where the nest came from, but we found its sibling in the yard under that honeysuckle over there. So we put the uh, sibling with it, with its, other sibling and eventually they were gone so uh you know happy ending there <laughs> but uh it's really been fun kind of checking out what's coming up in this garden i know i've got uh we've got a hosta in here i've got some epimedium i cannot even wait for these peonies to bloom i am dying to see what color they are and uh, i got a little work to do out here I do need to start trimming this uh, baby's breath spirea back. It's a little out of control. And we noticed that there are some pretty hostas under here, which I love that hosta. I, I had ones at my other house that had a lot more uh, white on them than green. So like pretty much the opposite of what I'm finding here. And I love the foliage on this, really pretty. So I really wanna kind of give it a little room, maybe even dig it out because obviously <laughs> it might be a little too cramped in here. But uh, anyway, one of the things that I thought I would change when we moved in was this green fence. You know, I just, I love a cottage garden and the green just didn't feel very cottage to me. Well, let me tell you, I was wrong because I love the green fence now. I think it's really beautiful. I love it with all the plants and I think it looks good. So we're gonna keep it, we're, keep, we're keeping it and we're just gonna go with the green. Honeysuckle, all on here. That's where we had the little bunnies before they moved on. Um, don't see any blooms ready to come on this one. I have a honeysuckle down by the potager garden and that one has a lot of blooms on it already. Um, they, they're just about, they're budding, they're just about to go maybe in the next day or so. I've got some hydrangeas in here. I'm curious to see, you know, I think these are limelights. And uh, we've got some rhodes, some pyrus japonica beautiful Japanese maple. I love the architecture of this plant. Look at those weeping branches. Isn't that beautiful? Again, I had one Japanese maple. As a matter of fact, it was one very similar to that one over there. And when Superstorm Sandy hit New Jersey, it broke my Japanese maple and that was the end of it. So, and I never replanted it. So I'm really thrilled that we have so many here to enjoy. Now back in here, I know we've got some stilbies. Gorgeous, 
gorgeous hostas. I mean, there's so many different variety of hostas here. It's, it's just amazing. And I was originally gonna like just dig them up and move them around, but I decided I should really kind of see what varieties they are and where I want to move them to before I just dig them out and move them. Cause there's like a whole bed uh, in the back that looks pretty empty. And uh, I'd love to just move some hostas over there. So maybe I'll do that in fall. Got some beautiful hellebores here. Look at how big and gorgeous they are. That's gotta be like 36 inches tall, maybe 36 inches wide. I mean, that's how big they are. And how pretty the flowers are too. We've got a birch tree here. And I love the color on that Japanese maple too, don't you? You know, never underestimate foliage in your garden because as much as I love flowers and blooms, foliage color and texture is also very important. So, and I gotta tell you, moving here, the bones were all here. Like there were such, all these specimen plants and they really have a, a lot of plants, a lot more than I thought were here. So it's really been fun this spring walking around and you know, discovering plants that are popping up in the beds. We've got another Bernera over here, some lamb's ear, some more hellebores back there. Got a pretty red azalea, reddish pink, I guess. That magnolia I told you guys about last time, didn't get a lot of flowers, but this must be a young plant still. So I'm not sure when they planted it, but uh, it had a few flowers and that was pretty much it. This monster over here, I believe is wisteria. <laughs> um, it has not flowered yet. We did tame it a little bit because it was just all over the place. So if I sacrifice the blooms on it, so be it. Uh, but it looks like it's still gonna do its thing. So, you know, we'll just kind of wait and see. Look, oh my gosh, I haven't been back here in a few days and look, <laughs> those hellebores are huge. My goodness, and look, there's like a fresh bud. How pretty is that? We've got some more azaleas. You know, and it's funny, at my old house, I planted white and I, you know, I was just kind of going for like a little more neutral look with my azaleas. I'm really digging the pink and the red, really pretty. Um, those were my Virginia bluebells, they're done. We've got some Baptisia in here. We've got some Baptisia in the front that's about to bloom too, so. That's really going to be fun. And look at this maple. Is that foliage gorgeous? Look at that. Now I know I've showed you guys these benches. We didn't make them, but the former homeowner, I think hired the job out and made these tree benches from existing trees. Isn't that so cool? My dog, I'll, sometimes I'll see her sitting out here. <laughs> kind of cracks me up just seeing her sitting out here enjoying the garden but you know I do that too so I could see why she would do it um these were all daffodils they're all done and I know a few of you are going to ask me because I've been I've been getting asked a lot on Instagram uh what I'm going to be doing with them I am just going to leave them be if you cut the foliage back too early, you're taking away from next year's blooms. So really just leave them alone. If they bother you, plant some, you know, annuals or something or perennials in front of them or around them. So it kind of hides the dying foliage. But you know, to me, I, I, I don't really mind them. I actually kind of like it. So then we've got some roadies, they're about to bloom. Looks like I've got some pink ones in here. And then I believe these are Spanish bluebells. I had to look them up because again, never groom. Now, if I'm wrong, please tell me, but I believe these are Spanish bluebells. Aren't they pretty? And then over here, as we head back to the house, is a beautiful weeping hemlock. I mean, this is like just such a beautiful tree. And I can see it from inside the house. And in winter, it was just so pretty, all snow covered. Um, you can check back at one of my former videos. I think I did a tour in the snow and it just was so pretty. Those weeping branches and it just, you know, has a lot of character. And then really my favorite tree sculpture is this one. It's made into koi, 
and it's, it's really pretty. We, we don't have koi here right now in the ponds. We will uh, hopefully soon. The former homeowner had them and apparently mink got to them in the front pond by the bridge and they just didn't restock it. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna try it. And then there's our outdoor living space that we are out here every night. There should be a glass top on that table, but it arrived completely shattered. So hopefully Wayfair will get me the replacement soon. Although I don't really mind it not being on there and it's one less thing to clean. So I might even pop the suction cups off and just call it a day. But uh, it's actually a great set for us. Originally, I was thinking we might stick with those lounge chairs here, but we really, because our, our, when our kids come home and stuff, we have three girls and you know, to be able to fit everyone back here, it's kind of nice to have extra seating than just two lounge chairs. <laughs> so I bought this set and it's worked out really great. I, I'm out here often, we're out here every night because it's such a joy to listen to the sounds of soothing water. And I gotta tell you, if you do not have a water fountain or you know a pond, I mean, not everyone can put a pond in. I know that can be kind of expensive and a lot of work, but if you can add some sort of water feature, even if it's an inexpensive fountain, I'll link a few down below because I did a blog post all about water features. Um, really, it's so worth doing because just to listen to the soothing sounds of water is so relaxing. Like you don't have to live at the beach or the lake to enjoy the water. Another beautiful Japanese maple here. And one plant that I wanted to plant at the old house is this Sambuca. Isn't it beautiful? I love the foliage on it. it does need to be tamed a little bit. Uh, but you know, I wanted to kind of see how things grew before I did anything. We're actually gonna be working on the beds back here, I think this week. But uh, when we do get koi, we're gonna start them in this pond because I think we can fit two or three in here and then we'll have to relocate them to the front pond. And then over here in these containers, I'm gonna be adding a lot more containers. I'm actually gonna be working on a lot more this week. I've got uh, helianthus, sun believable, some ranunculus with some uh, pansies and some euphorbia, licorice plant. This one's actually doing better than any, and it, it, it's been in the shade, so I guess it I guess it likes that a little bit more than my sun-loving one over there. <laughs> so I'll probably be changing that pot out pretty soon. But new are these beautiful bearded irises. Look at that color. Look at the bloom. Those petals, the details. Wasn't sure what these were gonna look like, and now to see them in bloom, really beautiful this is a european larch as you can see it's getting a lot of new foliage that's what this light color is and uh i i love this i i really am digging the weeping weeping plants i just think they're so graceful and i love the architecture and then as we go over here i do have my elephant ears i'm gonna they're actually not staying here they're getting a little too much sun I'm gonna be planting underneath them, probably with some impatience or something, and uh, I'm gonna have to move them. Another sun believable over there. And then in here, I eventually wanna get a little Buddha statue, and uh, I'm gonna be adding a bunch of containers with flowers, and I was originally thinking I would move my house plants all out here, but I think it's gonna be a little too sunny for them. So I'm just gonna do pots of flowers and uh, run some drips here so I don't have to worry about it and call it a day. These are my zinnias that I was supposed to get in the ground this weekend, but didn't. So this is on task for this week. I've got like 10 or 11 different varieties here. It's insane. But what I wanna show you is this. Now it looks like a bunch of nothing because I planted sweet peas in them and the ones that came up, I already put in the ground, but look at this. Sweet pea germinated. After all those months, I thought there was nothing in them and that's why I left them here thinking maybe one will sprout and look at that, it did. So never give up. So I mentioned before that I wanna move a bunch of the hostas in here. This is definitely a future plan for me. I'm not gonna be doing it anytime soon because I'm really working on the cottage garden and the potager garden and that's really where I'm spending most of my time. 
But uh, I do want to add a few more of these little stepping stones going up to the little doggy door up there. We've got a pretty azalea, beautiful garden sculpture. Another pretty roadie, look, it's blooming like a fuchsia pink. And then that azalea is just beautiful, isn't it? Got some more Spanish bluebells in there that I think are pretty much done. Um, I would love to put, and I found this online and my husband <laughs> said no because it's, it's, it's a ridiculous amount of money and I have to agree, but I found this beautiful statue that like represents wealth and happiness and a happy family. And I just think it would be like perfect here, but you know, it's just on a wish list. I'm sure it's not something we're gonna be able to afford anytime soon, but this seems to be a property of many sculptures. And I happen to find this beautiful stone one online. I'll have to like snap a picture of it, do a picture in picture, just so you can see what it is. And I'll put in the description what it is. Cause I can't remember off the top of my head, but I just thought it would look so pretty here. And we'd be able to see it from our living room every time we were in there. So, you know, wish list. And then heading down this way, there's a bunch of hostas here. Again, love, love these hostas. I, I just think that they're really pretty with like the corkscrew, like foliage and you know, the details, really pretty. Um, then I've got this beautiful blooming dogwood with a nice big branch hanging out. We had a storm the other night, so must have fallen down. But we did open the pool this week, so I'm gonna take you down there. So we just hung out here for the first time today. It was so fun. Um, our pool heater is not exactly working just yet, but uh, you know, it, it, we have electricians coming out sometime this week, I think. But uh, these were the loungers. I had a couple of them on that back deck. Very comfortable, really love them. They come with a pad. I just put them all away just in case it rains. I don't want them to get all icky. Um, but uh, some more dogwoods back there. We've got these evergreen trees that are just doing nothing for the property and they've got ivy growing up, but like eventually we will fix this bed. For now, it's just gonna be left alone. And apparently my dogs would like to come with me. Let me get them. So let's start down here because I did move a few plants from my home. I just took some divisions just so I could take them with me. I wasn't sure if we had myostotis here, so I, took a little bit of my own little ostrich fern from my friend's house. She calls them Jurassic Fern because they are really big and they really took over her front porch area. She got them like, I don't know, from her family's home in Staten Island or something like that. And she let me have some many years ago and I really love them. And so I took them with me. We've got some bugle weed here. I'm not loving it in this bed. It's going to come out. Some astilbes. There's some roses here. Can't wait to kind of see how they bloom. Got some buds on them already. I did come out and feed them. Got some spireas. Love that chartreuse color, don't you? And then this is my stinking hellebore that I brought from the other house. Left some there, but a friend of mine gave me this many years ago and I love the foliage on it and uh, the flowers are really pretty. So uh, I just love the neutral blooms on them and they bloom for like the longest time too. So I did just plant a bunch of dahlias in here. I got like nine different varieties. So, and I did see some of them already starting to break ground. So that's very exciting. We've got some Sedum Autumn Joy. I believe we've got some Serendipity Aliums here, some Daylilies, some more, um, Azaleas, they really shouldn't be here. This is full sun and I mean, I'm kind of surprised they're doing okay. We'll have to see how they do over the course of the summer because I'm thinking about moving them. Uh, we've got another bearded iris and here's something you don't see every day, hostas with roses. So I'm definitely gonna be moving the um, these out. They were just really big and I've really been working in the cottage garden. Um, the roses all have a ton of buds on them ready to go. I did feed them with a spoma rose tone and uh, they are ready to go and they look amazing. Since the last time you guys saw the cottage garden, a lot has been planted. I got all my snapdragons in, my larkspur. Uh, I know you guys saw that I had planted some sage and some columbine and this dianthus and uh, may salvia night. 
but uh, I, I also added, I have all these grow through hoops. I'm not a fan of these ones that don't have the little sections to them because uh, they're just kind of a pain to assemble and I don't really like those. So if you're looking for good grow through hoops, don't get those. I recommend these. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description because they're great with peonies and uh, you know, dahlias and stuff. And these are just a mistake, <laughs> but I'm gonna make them work for me this year. I was thinking about doing mesh netting, but you know what? I just went with what I had and didn't feel like doing all that. So I just put it, I just planted these Iceland poppies. Aren't they so pretty? I started them from seed last year, and to be honest, they, they never looked this good. So when I saw them at the nursery, I just picked them up. Got some lantana and uh, these beautiful blue delphiniums were just speaking to me and wanted me to buy them. So here they are in my garden. Look at that blue. Isn't that something? Also new, I added some echinacea in here, some bee balm. It's a summerific hibiscus. I've also got some liatris in here and some geranium. I also added these beautiful harvest baskets. I just thought they added some texture and charm to the fence and the garden as everything fills in. Look at that gorgeous foxglove. I have not had luck with foxglove ever returning. I know they're biennial. They've just never reseeded for me and returned <laughs> in the future. So uh, I've tried them many times over the years and we're gonna try it again because I moved, it's a new garden and I'm gonna see if they take any better here. Also have some peonies, I've got a yarrow. We found some uh, bleeding hearts just kind of randomly out in the woods on our property, but we just dug them out and moved them in here. I guess some seed must have blown around. And uh, look, my hookahs are, are, are starting to look a little bit better. I told you they'd bounce back. And I've got some Solomon's seal. My kid's tricycle was around the bend. I guess someone moved it. But all along here, I'm gonna be adding all of my zinnias. Not all of them, but a good number of them. And uh, it's really starting to look good, right? I can't wait to see it grow and fill in. It's not gonna be, you know, super huge this year like my existing, like my garden was at my former house. But I think with the seed starts, it's really gonna look full, lush, and blooming. I did pot up a few whiskey barrels with some uh, gorgeous geraniums and canna lilies, and I've got some euphorbia in here, and some, uh, what's this one called? Florida Sun Rose Coleus. I thought the foliage on this looked so pretty with the blooms on that geranium. Got some bacopa in here too, and some petunias. Oh, let me show you the new garden that I planted. So this garden is really looking amazing. I mean, I didn't think I was gonna love the bugle weed. I do love it in here, although there are a lot of white oak tree seedlings and some seedlings from this uh, buckeye that are germinating. So it's gonna be a little bit of a mess to weed out, but this garden is really, really beautiful. Love this hosta. I have not seen this variety before. I don't know what it is, but I love the green on green with this little white detail. It's just beautiful. If you know what the variety is, please comment and let me know because I would love to know. Then I've got my Sedum Autumn Joy in here. And uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, the red on that Nandina looks so pretty. It's finally you know, coming back. Still not really my favorite look, but it's it's coming back. You know, I would rather see something evergreen in there, maybe some boxwoods and a, a dwarf Alborada spruce or something just to get something conical in the corner. But uh, I've got a beautiful little birdhouse from Good Directions. I already have a bird nesting in there. It's been feverishly nesting all week.